Welcome back to Gaelic Games Fan TV, full-time Dublin 221, Derry 318, Derry win 3-1 on penalties. And oh my goodness me, this was probably one of the most crazy, most mental, most wild games I think I've ever been to in Crow Park. This was absolutely insane, absolutely crazy. I've no idea how this game even went to penalties. Um, I've no idea how Dublin managed to somehow get out of normal time, let alone extra time. They obviously win a late free at the end of normal time, um, which sort of came out of nowhere. And obviously a lot of people very much disputing whether that was a free or not. I was obviously in, in Hill 16, as you would have saw from that opening clip. So very hard to tell from my point of view whether that was a free or not. So uh, we'll probably leave that discussion for the podcast tomorrow. But um, yeah, the goal as well. The goal right at the end coming from absolutely nothing. Um, Derry had multiple chances to kill this game, multiple chances in normal time, multiple chances in extra time to kill Dublin off. In what was a very uh, unusual Dublin performance, it certainly wasn't the best version of Dublin that we've seen all year. I think it was largely down to how well Derry played. Um Derry were absolutely brilliant on, on Dublin's kickouts. Evan Comerford really struggled. Um, you saw Oren Lynch press up on Dublin's kickouts time and time again. And um, Dublin's movement was quite poor from kickouts. Evan Comerford wasn't quick enough off the kickouts as well. And Derry just kept turning Dublin uh, over time and time again. And um, it's not often you say this, but Dublin's midfield was absolutely bullied. There's no question about it. Brendan Rodgers was, was absolutely brilliant. Connor Glass. Very, very good performance. Um, Owen McAvoy, very, very good, obviously, playing in the in the halfback line. Um, Shane McGuigan doing Shane McGuigan things. Lakeland Murray, I thought, a very good game. And, yeah, Derry bossed the game in the second half. Um, first half was sort of more so how I expected the game to go. I mean, Derry were very standoffish. They had a lot of men behind the ball. They were trying to restrain Dublin uh, as much as possible. I think with the fact that Dublin came into this game with so much confidence and uh, playing some of the best football we've seen from Dublin probably since 2019. In all honesty, Derry stifled Dublin by keeping a lot of men behind the ball, hitting Dublin on the counter attack, keeping them out. Um, and it was a game plan that kept Derry well within the game. Um, but at the same time, I thought in the first half, you know, both sides shooting wise was probably quite poor. You could tell Dublin weren't really at the races. Um, and then in the second half, look, they switched it up, Derry, and they went for it. They went for Dublin's throats. Um, yeah, like midfield-wise, they were absolutely brilliant. And they, they dominated the game. There's absolutely no question about it. Dublin really struggled to get some of their big players in the game. And there's no doubt Dublin, for me, I think this is the first time, because I do think it's important to remember, Dublin still missing a lot of key players. Um, the likes of James McCarthy, Cormac Costello, who I think was a massive loss today. I think he would have made a big impact going down the home stretch from a Dublin perspective. Um, you know, I think missing a lot of key players like Paul Mannion, who obviously comes on, looks very rusty, didn't look as his usual self. He obviously misses big chances uh, as well. Missed the free um, right in front of Hill 16 in extra time, which you were kind of left uh, a bit baffled by. And um, yeah, like overall, it's just it um, from a Dublin perspective, you could see like even the likes of a Jack McCaffrey, uh, Stephen Cluxton, who I think would have been a lot quicker and sharper off of those kickouts. I mean, you know, Comerford in the championship last year was 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 Dublin's third choice goalkeeper. Um, and what's happened with David O'Hanlon, I'm not entirely sure. He was on the bench, so I'm not entirely sure why um, why he didn't start. But yeah, like you, you could see some of the key players. Like, and Dublin's defense was was ripped to shreds in in different moments. Keen Murphy very good um, in attack, but Sean McMahon pulled from from pillar to post in different moments. Um, Sean Bugler struggled. John Small I thought struggled a little bit as well. And Derry just pulled Dublin apart defensively, and obviously no Mick Fitzsimons in that Dublin side as well. So. Key players, and look, obviously, for Derry, I'm sure they're missing a few uh, key players as well. Obviously, Gary McKinless comes on in the second half, goes straight off, you know, another another 20 minutes after that. But um, the better team won. There's, there's absolutely no doubt about it. Dublin somehow managed to get themselves level at the end of the game. You were kind of looking at it in normal time and thinking, how how are Dublin going to find a way to, to, to pull this back? Sean Bugler misses a massive chance. Um, Derry had multiple chances before that to kill the game. Connor Glass misses a, a 45. 
Um, Sean Bugler misses that chance down the other end. Derry kick a short kick out. And out of absolutely nothing, Dublin win a free. And as I said, a lot of people obviously not happy with Conor Lane's performance. Um, obviously, I, I was in Crow Park, so it's very hard to tell. Um, but I do think there were some, certainly some odd decisions as well. Like I'll have to have a look back at, you know, multiple red cards, obviously, in the game. Um, what was it? Fenton gets sent off. Was it John Small who got sent? Paddy Small who got sent off as well. So multiple uh, red cards from a Dublin perspective, and and I'll, I'll obviously have to uh, have to have a look back at that. But yeah, send the game to extra time. Then in extra time, uh, Derry again, you know, reinsert their dominance. They get themselves obviously a, a massive goal in extra time, um, which looks to have uh, have killed Dublin. Off without question. Uh, oh, McAvoy obviously getting that goal, and then right at the end, Greg McEnany comes up with you know a sort of a a weird, a weird hail mary ball sent in because Evan Comfort obviously lays it off to um, I think it was a Howard, and and then he obviously floats the ball into the square. Ball sort of bobbles around all over the place, and um, then yeah, obviously Greg McEnany ends up with the with the ball in the back of the net and. Uh, send the game to to penalties, which was wild. And you were kind of thinking at that stage, the amount of adversity Dublin have somehow come through. You would imagine, sure, you know, Dublin are going to win this now. That's what I was thinking. I, I was just laughing on the hill, thinking, right, I, I think Dublin are going to win this now. But fair play to Derry. Obviously, some of Dublin's penalties were quite poor. Khan obviously missing was a big surprise. Um, Lorcan O'Dell, obviously, a few young young players. Like you'd imagine, if you had Costello on there. He takes a penalty. If Fenton isn't sent off, he probably takes a penalty. Paddy Small probably takes one as well if he's not sent off. So it's one of them, like ultimately as a Dublin fan, like disappointed I lost the game or we lost the game. But ultimately, at the same time, you know, the All Ireland is obviously the the big one. And um I think Dublin's resilience was impressive to, to come back when they clearly hadn't played at their absolute best. Um, and at the same time, you know, uh, like th this can be a good thing for Dublin, good thing, good thing for Derry as well. You know, Derry getting that win in Crow Park against the big team, something they've obviously been missing for a long, long time. Uh, you know, first league title since 2008, which will massively uh, bode them well. And um, yeah, like, I mean, like for Derry to, to get that win, you know, because if Derry ha had a loss on penalties, I think it would have been worse for them just considering they were miles the better side um you know obviously looking back a lot of people talking about refereeing decisions so maybe that went in, in dublin's favor as well um i would be curious to see the penalty back i mean most people are saying the shane mcguigan penalty was a clear penalty it was kind of hard to see on the hill to be honest with you but we'll, we'll obviously have to go back and watch that yeah, just a, a wild wild game of uh of gaelic football certainly one of the most Craziest games I think I've ever been to, in all honesty. And my voice sounds like it's going to go as well. So, um, hopefully, we can still make it to the end of the, the end of the show. We'll run through some comments here. Patrick says, "Fair play to Derry. Yeah, absolutely, fair play to them. Um, they, you know, they Mickey Hart and, and Derry brought a clear game plan to Crow Park. Um, you know, they 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 stifled Dublin very well in the first half, made life difficult, and then in the second half they went for it and on kickouts." Um, they were absolutely brilliant. Like Dublin really struggled on that. And um, the way they removed the ball, their efficiency in front of goal, I think was very good. It wasn't perfect. I think closing out the game is certainly something I think they need to to work on ever so slightly. Um, because like even even like when they had that three point lead, they had multiple chances like towards the end to pop the ball over the bar and they just didn't take them. And they kept giving Dublin so many lifelines and Dublin look are the all Ireland champions if you keep giving them lifelines they'll find a way you know they, they, there's that small chance they find a way and obviously Greg McEnany to be fair smashes that ball uh, in the uh, in the back of the net looking looking on Scorpio I actually have no idea who scored the goal to be honest with you but score, looking at Scorpio there they, they say it's Greg McEnany so we'll trust their word for it uh, Stephen says Derry were phenomenal thought the referee wasn't great too inconsistent with calls, um, Derry were pressing Dublin very well when they were trying to play their possession game. They were absolutely, um, yeah. Look, pro probably a few decisions, most certainly from the referee. Uh, be interesting to, you know, I'll obviously watch the, you know, Sunday game later, um, and, and watch the game back to to sort of see 
all those decisions. But um, I do remember one or two frees, most certainly. That I remember once or twice Dublin got a few frees and saying to a few mates, I think we I think we got away with that one. Do you know, do you know that way? Um, but then there was one or two I remember where I was thinking, how was the referee not saw that? Like there was one instance where Connor Glass kicks the ball back on the pitch as Evan Comerford's taken a, a kick out. And Evan Comerford, as we said, Dublin had struggled quite a lot with kick outs, but this one he got off very quickly. Dublin were away. Glass kicks the ball back on the field. And, and you know, the referee said, you know, obviously the, 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 the kick out has to be taken again. And, and there was no yellow card given to, to Glass there. So, so there was multiple things missed. Umpires obviously missed things as well. But, uh, but there we go. In the end, the, the better team did win the game. So, so fair play. Tomo says, are you going to do a National Football League reactions video? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I think my Division 1 predictions were pretty horrendous, but uh, but there we go. Uh, Gavin says, nice to see someone who isn't Kerry, may or Dublin win the league, makes it more uh, more interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think Derry were already at the, the party in terms of being all or in contenders. There's no doubt about that. But, but this result just reaffirms that even more. Um, and they're... You know, they're looking more and more like they're ready now to do it. They're looking more and more like they're ready to win that All Ireland. Um, the only two teams I think that can stop them are Ryder, Dublin, or Kerry. You know, it's one of them two. Uh, if Derry are beaten in the championship this year, I, th I think it's one of them two. Um, in, in my in my opinion, um, but Derry have proven they have more than what it takes. Like midfield, they dominated. Um, and and even some of the younger lads like Owen McAvoy, who's come in. Two goals, two points. Lakeland Murray, very impressive. Cor McMurphy, who came off the bench, looks very good. So Derry are having a whole host of scores. You know, Shane McGuigan finishes the game with with 1-4, but Derry still end up with a tally of, what, 3-18. So, you know, they're not as reliant on Shane McGuigan as maybe they would have been in previous years. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, um, that's definitely standing to Derry in fairness. Dean says, hope all as well. Cracking game of football, but unfortunately the Dubs came out the wrong end, but better team won. And it's a lesson they end up behind. But handy come championship up the Dubs. Yeah, absolutely. Like Because realistically, Dublin are probably going to waltz through Leinster, probably going to waltz through the group stages as well, give or take. Um, you know, so, so this is probably Dublin's last big test, maybe until an all Ireland quarter final. So to get that, test you know and, and big game and, and there's obviously something to to go back on um like especially from a dublin perspective because they were very risk adverse at times and there was probably moments watching dublin where it reminded me a lot of dublin last year sort of pre the all Ireland quarter final where they really kicked into gear you know like it reminded me of dublin against ross common a little bit dublin against kildare claire where they just didn't want to take enough risks didn't want to take chances didn't want to pop the ball over the bar overthinking things um and as i said i think big players like homer costello big players like paul mannion you know obviously paul mannion comes off the bench but big players like that i think we're really missing um you know paddy small comes off the bench then obviously gets sent off so there was multiple big players that i think were were, were missing for, for dublin which you know had those players have been there i think maybe maybe it's a different game you know a james mccarthy in the side uh, may, maybe dublin are a lot better in the realm midfield and Mick Fitzsimons in the full-back line, maybe, maybe Dublin don't concede as many goals. Um, it, it's hard to know, but at the same time, you can't take anything away from Derry because um, you know they beat what was a very informed Dublin team. And um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a very good performance by them. In fairness, uh, Derek says, great match, and the Dublin new lads will learn so much from the today. They absolutely will. Con O'Callaghan was well-marked. By McCaig. Yeah, he did. Chrissy McCaig did a great job in fairness. Con was, yeah, he was very quiet in, uh, in fairness in comparison to previous games. Uh, wake up call from Dublin. I'm sure they will learn plenty from the loss than maybe uh, if they won, says Tom. Yeah, absolutely. Like if Dublin had won that penalty shootout, look, Desi's obviously a you know very smart man and um, he, he's done a very good job in charge of Dublin uh, up until this point. Um, so, like I think even if they had a won, they would have gone back and obviously look look back at this game, picked it apart. The analysis team, the analysts, everything else would have picked apart this game in uh, in in great detail. But the fact they lost it maybe just makes it a little bit more in the sense of um, why were Dublin very passive at times in attacks? Where where why were Dublin very slow uh, on kickouts at the majority of the time? Why was the midfield absolutely dominated? 
Um, and and yeah, like I think that will be the the big question from a, from a Dublin perspective. Um, absolutely. Gavin says wasn't Galway VR Armagh 2022, but really exciting game. Definitely up there uh, at the top. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That game was was absolutely crazy. Uh, Gaelic guy says frustrated with Armagh today, but this game was sens- was sensational. So made up for it. Yeah, I haven't seen the um, the Armagh Donegal game. Yeah, but I'll I'll certainly watch that back and um yeah from what I heard it wasn't the the best the best game um in 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 fairness, Brandon says I'm pretty sure I saw you on the hill fair play fair play, uh Gaelic Oi McGinney isn't playing his best team um yeah yeah I'll I'll definitely have to have a look back at that but um but yeah overall like bit of a bit of a mad game obviously one of the lads was saying there he saw me on the hill I do have a few a few funny clips actually from uh. From when the goal goes in, so when the Greg McEnany goal goes in, I managed to catch it live. Um, so yeah, let, let's watch this clip because uh, yeah, it was absolutely chaotic scenes. I'm not too sure I've seen the hill like this before, in all honesty. But uh, but yeah, we'll uh, we will go and uh, and watch it. Back. <laughs> No effing way, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was trying to turn the uh, the volume there. There, so anyone who's, who who was listening there, sorry if the volume absolutely uh, made you deaf. But there you go. Yeah, absolutely crazy, crazy scenes. And we'll be certainly sharing more of those clips uh, throughout the channel over the next few days. But yeah, look, overall, fair play to to Derry. Um, you know, I suppose that celebration in the end was was for nothing. Um, but it was more just just wild, like the fact that Dublin even managed to. To get the game to, to penalties. Um but yeah, I'll just run through uh some scores maybe overall in the in the game. So Shane McGuigan with one four, Blake Lamurray, three points, very impressive. Connor Glass with two was very impressive. Dublin's best performer like Con Basquel with one one. Con got five points. Um I thought Key Murphy attacking wise was very good for Dublin. Two points for him. He was probably Dublin's best player overall. Killian O'Gara, who came on, made a, a big impact. Um as well but yeah overall like Dublin's forwards just misfiring quite a lot like no no scores from Kilkenny uh Paddy Small comes on just a point from him just a point from Mannion as well who missed um a number of big frees um Tom Lahiff played well and uh, fairness two two points from him but yeah ov- overall Dublin's attack very much miss uh firing um so there we go um but yeah overall Great win from uh, a dairy perspective. Much well uh, deserved. Uh, Brandon says, just behind you in that clip going mad. Love when the hills like that. Absolutely, yeah. It was uh, it was chaotic in fairness, but sure. Look, fair play, fair play to Derry for for getting over the line. They um, yeah, they they deserved the victory in the end. And for Dublin, back to the drawing board. Leinster Championship obviously to to come up. Mead or Longford will be the next team. Um, so that will be uh, that be interesting to see as well. So yeah, cheers anyone who tuned in. Massive congratulations to Derry. There'll be uh, plenty of videos coming out soon. There'll be a review show tomorrow, recapping all the games. I'll be reacting obviously to my football league predictions because uh, yeah, I, I think some of them were okay, like further down the divisions. But Division One, yeah, Division One, um, yeah, not so good. But we'll obviously react to that as well. Be doing some predictions for the All Ireland Football Championship because uh yeah, it's just a week away, which is a little bit crazy, but there we go. Um and uh yeah, plenty, plenty more to come along the way. So yeah, cheers anyone who tuned in. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we will speak to you all in the next one.